Hey everybody, I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring, a great resource if you're prepping for the SAT. I've got lots of free lessons, free tools, and I'm also the author of the SAT Packet Study Guides, which you can purchase on Amazon. They're a great tool to help you on your own if you're studying for the test. But today's video is a kind of big picture strategy thing about the reading section. But as you can see, I'm, I'm doing something weird here. So if you've seen some of my other videos, they're very straightforward, they're meant to give you the big picture stuff. Um, you know, I, I just want to get the information out as easily as possible. Here, I'm kind of responding to some other bad information that I keep seeing. So, uh, basically, the most common questions about the entire SAT are about the reading section. It's everyone's least favorite section, I'm pretty sure. And the, the common questions that we get, that I get, that we see on Reddit all the time, are, you know, okay, my score is not improving. What do I do? My reading score is not improving. What do I do? I can't finish the reading section. What do I do? Um, I don't understand the passages. What do I do? And we keep getting, we keep finding that the same bad advice gets posted on those responses. And it's just driving me a little crazy here. The, the advice basically is this. Read more. Read better. Improve your reading comprehension. Um, pay attention to the details. Summarize the passage more clearly. Well... If you're having trouble with the reading section because you can't comprehend what you're reading, just telling someone to read better is not going to solve it. Be improving your reading comprehension by reading Charles Dickens and Jane Austen and the Federalist Papers, yeah, that's all well and good if you've got a lifetime ahead of you to improve your reading comprehension. Most of you have four weeks until your SAT, if that. You need a solution now. And so that's where my advice comes in. You need to change your strategy or you're not going to change your score. And that's why when you take practice reading sections, a lot of times you keep getting the same score is you're just doing the same thing over and over again. You need a new way to think about things. So if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm a big advocate of what I call the no reading strategy. I do not read the passages. I go right to the questions and start answering them. If the question tells me to go to a part of the passage, I go and I find the answer in those lines and read that part, but I don't read the whole thing. And it's because I know that the bigger picture strategy for the reading section is to shift your focus from the lines and the passage to the questions and the choices. That's where you need to comprehend what's going on. So if you're struggling with the reading section, I, I really want to show you how all of this is going to work and what this feels like. And so that's why this passage is weird. What I've done is I have redacted every third word of this passage. This is from the May 2021 exam. I have not looked at this. I do not know the answers. I have never seen this passage. I guess it's possible I helped someone with a question at some point, but I do not remember it. I have no idea what this is about. And I just went through and without reading it, crossed out every third word, so I now cannot read it. I am trying to simulate the experience that I think a lot of you have when you look at some of these passages, especially these old timey passages that are just like written in weird English, right? I mean, you're reading, but you're not absorbing a full sentence, right? You're not necessarily reading it the way that you, you understand a conversation, where you understand every word, every idea, every point that a person is making, right? You're maybe getting a couple words, but most of it is in one ear and out the other as if it never happened. So I'm gonna simulate that experience. I understand the passages when I read them, but like I said, I don't really read them. I go right to the questions. And so here we're gonna do that, and I'm gonna show you what this might feel like and how we're supposed to accommodate this problem and so one easy solution is if you are having trouble finishing the passages in time, well, not reading them is going to save you time, especially if it's five minutes you're spent reading a passage that you don't even understand. What's the point of that five minutes? Save it. Use it on the questions. So I'm going to keep a timer going. I'm going to set it for 13 minutes, and um, that's how long you'd want to spend on each passage, right? 65 minutes divided by five, 13 and so I'm going to try to follow it. I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit as I go through this, so that way uh, you can kind of get into my head and see how I approach things. So I might go over the 13, but I'm going to try to stick to it. And really, I'm just trying to show you what I see and how I deal with uncertainty and confusion and the fact that I don't understand what I'm reading. I can still find ways around it. It's not going to be perfect. I do not expect to get 10 out of 10 questions right here. 
But I want to show you that you can do really well with a very minimal understanding of what you're reading in the passage as long as we shift our focus to the questions and the answer choices. That's where the real work gets done. That's where you want to comprehend as much as possible. So I hope to show you what that looks like. If you haven't watched my long lesson on the no reading strategy, I might use some vocabulary words here that, that aren't familiar to you, but it's okay. You can always watch that later. The big picture stuff should make sense. So let's give it a shot. Here we go. 13 minutes. I'm going to try my best. I really don't know how this is going to go. This could be a total disaster. Okay. All right. So first things first, I would read the blurb. It doesn't really tell me anything. It tells me it's old. It's from Rerum Novarum. I don't speak Latin, so I have no idea what that means. So I'm not going to even read any of this. I'm going to go right to the questions. So question 11, based on the passage, Leo the 13th would be most likely to agree that the economic conditions of his era attest to which basic relationship. So this seems like a whole passage question. I would skip this even if I had read the passage because I don't, I'm not going to have a good sense of what it's about. I'm going to have to, you know, go around here. Oh, but wait a minute. No, it's an evidence question. So I can do this. There you go. See, already evidence pair. So I want to know, he agrees that the economic conditions of his era attest to which basic relationship. So I'm highlighting words that I, I think stand out to me. So let's go to those lines. One to four. I'm going to try to see what I can get out of this, even though I can't read it as if it were a sentence. So that's here. It to pass, working men, surrendered, helpless, hard-heartedness, employers, greed, competition. Okay, so something about working men and greedy employers. Okay, so I don't know. I'll, I'll write that. Greedy employers. Now notice, I didn't read the sentences, but I saw the words that mattered, right? So uh, I'm getting something out of it, even if I don't understand it completely. Four through eight. Let's see what that's all about. Okay. Uh, ta -ta -ta, the something has been by rapacious. That's a bad word, which although then once by the nevertheless different, but with injustice, still covetous, grasping men. So it seems like this is also about greed. Okay. So I don't know. Similar grasping men. I don't know. Seems negative. Eight to 14. Um, here to here. Uh, duh, duh, duh. must add it, hiring, trade, concentrated, hands of few, okay, uh, small, men, able, pawn, masses, laboring poor, yoke, little, slavery itself. Okay, so again, more, more slavery, more stuff about poor seems negative, so I'll put slavery here, and then 15 to 20. Okay. Uh, remedy, ooh, that's a good word. The socialists, or the remedy maybe, or maybe not, and man's envy the rich, striving away with property, individual, should become common property, um, uses of lives. Okay, so something about socialists, fine. Okay, so notice I haven't eliminated any of these answers because I don't know what they say, but I got enough out of them that maybe I can now look for similar ideas in question 11. Let's see what we can do. So he would most likely agree, he'd be most likely to agree that the economic conditions of his era attest to which basic relationship, that modifications of the laws regulating the economy heighten tensions between employers and workers. Okay, this last part seems right. I don't think of anything about laws. I don't remember reading about laws, so that doesn't seem good. Let's keep going. Social inequality worsens as the economy increasingly comes into the control of a select group of business people. That seemed right. They were talking about things being in the hands of the few. Okay, so that seemed good. I don't know about worsens. That's a strong word. I don't know. It makes me nervous. C, competition between businesses in a particular sector of the economy influences the morale of the workers in that sector. I don't think so. Morale, like how good the workers are feeling, I don't think that's there. They also aren't talking about particular sectors as far as I could tell. Again, maybe I missed it, but it seems unlikely. Main ideas are repeated ideas. So if it was important, I probably would have come across it in some of these lines. So I don't know. It doesn't seem that they were talking about a specific sector. It seems it was more general. D, measures meant to protect workers from economic exploitation have the unintended effect of encouraging such exploitation. Um, I don't know. I don't really remember reading anything about the measures. So I don't really know here. Let's see. I'm going to go back to some of these lines. Um, surrendered helpless. Okay. Greed, rapacious, injustice, covetous. That's that line reference C that's sticking out to me. Uh, the hiring of blank and the something of trade concentrated in hands of few. So small blank very men have able to pawn the masses of laboring poor, yoke little slavery itself. Yeah, 
I don't know. So worsen says the economy increasingly comes under the control of a select group of people. That seems to match with line reference C. Um, the socialists maybe are the measure meant to protect workers. Let's go to that. Remedy, right? Measure is socialists, striving, common property. Yeah, it doesn't really say that it's making things worse. I think that the remedy is the socialists, but it doesn't really say it's making anything worse, so I don't like that. Yeah, I think it's going to be this B and this C. And I'm not going to check. I'm going to check at the end, so I have no idea. We'll know later whether I'm right or wrong. Okay, good. Here we go. As used in line 19, common most nearly means. So hopefully this word is not crossed out. Here it is. So uh, they're talking about common property. So uh, it's. I'm assuming it's about it being everybody's property, so shared property is my guess of what they mean here. Guess is shared. That's an answer. Is anything inferior? No. Normal? No. Frequent? Nothing about time. So yeah, that seems right. Cool. Okay, here we go. This is a problem. According to Leo the 13th, the desire to acquire property prompts individuals too. So this is a no-line reference. This is a problem. Even if I had read the passage, how would I know where to look for this, right? So I use the chronology rule. Chronology rule. Watch my lesson to learn more about that. But I say, okay, 45. This is somewhere in the middle here. So I'm, I'm assuming the answer, this is 19. I'm assuming the answer to 14 is somewhere between 19 and 45. And we're talking about the desire to acquire property. What does it do to individuals? So let's go here. It's somewhere maybe in here. Let's see if I can find anything that seems about desires, right? Let's look at what, make sure I know what I'm looking for. Desire to acquire property. Okay. Uh, da, 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 will, okay, fair. Uh, they are blank or so powerless to the controversy where they into effect. Working man would be first suffer. They more emphatically possessor, okay. Possessor distort functions of state, utter confusion. That might seem like a bad consequence of property. Surely that when man engages, remunerative labor, impelling reason, motive work is obtained. Oh, motive is to obtain property. Uh, thereafter, very own, when man strength, skill, purpose, satisfaction, his needs, therefore require, rightful, okay, um, disposal, live sparingly, money and greater security, his savings land and is such as the only wages from his working little estate. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what I'm reading, by the way. I'm reading little words and I'm kind of like trying to absorb things. It's talking maybe about like property and obtaining it and then it says something about living sparingly. So, okay, let me see if that matches anything here. Feel envious of others' possessions, maybe. Uh, seek work from an employer, okay, because they want property, they go out and get a job. Maybe view work as more dignified than they otherwise would. I don't like this choice because it's comparative. Um, I would really need to see something about being compared to two different times, I guess. I don't know. Resist sources of short-lived gratification. Oof, this is a hard question. I really don't have a good answer here. This is a good example of why, you know, sometimes questions are just hard. Um... Uh, I don't think anything. I don't see anything about envious, right? Um, something's being distorted. Um, the motive of work obtain property. Okay. Um, he, his needs acquire things, I guess. Yeah. I think that I'll, the only thing I have evidence of, the desire to acquire property, is then you seek work from an employer. They kind of just seem to be defining what it means to go out and get a job, is that the the motive of work, I'm assuming that says, yeah, motive of something work is to obtain property, I'm guessing. It's a reason. So here's a good example where maybe these other ideas are mentioned, but the fact that I'm not picking up on them is not a good sign. So I'm going to go with B because it's the thing I can kind of prove. It's very weak, right? Notice that's that's a very vague kind of non-connotation answer. There's nothing positive or negative about that. It's just like you want stuff, so you go get a job so you can get stuff. Whereas A is very negative, right? Dignified, positive, resisting sources of long-term, long-lived gratification. That might match with the live sparingly, but... I don't know, man, that sounds like the opposite of what they're saying. So I'm going to go with B here. Hopefully I'm right. In line 45, is this a, okay. In line 45, the phrase little estate 
most directly refers to the, okay, so little estate, line 45. So here it is, little estate. Um, okay, thus if he lives sparingly, money and greater security, savings, land, as such, wages under form, working, little estate, purchased his full something as his wages, power, ownership, chattels. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know, it seems like the live sparingly piece is the most important thing here. Um, he's buying land, I guess. I don't know. Uh, most directly, first of the land or other property owned by a wage earner. Yeah, okay. Status of a wage earner within the community? No, they're not talking about status. Neighborhoods are not being talked about. It's not about the pay. Yeah, it's definitely A. Okay, six. Uh, 16, rather. Uh, can reasonably infer from the passage that Leo the Thirteenth views socialism as being threatening. So thankfully, they're giving me a summary here in the question. Um, because, okay, and I don't have a line reference for this. Oh, this is a huge pain in the neck. Okay. So I've got a skim here. There's no, I mean, it's probably after 45 is my guess because of the chronology rule again and question 15. So I'm going to look here and he thinks it's threatening. So uh, therefore chattels, possessions, um, they deprive him of liberty. Um, something about his condition. What, however, remedy propose against justice um, right to own property, I'm assuming is what that says. Uh, um, it's like a brutes. Um, I have no idea what the brute again. Um, reason, rights, possess things, um, permanent possession. Okay, so it seems like he's saying that possession is good. Um, I don't know. So it's socialism is threatening because it discourages disempowered groups from seeking greater recognition in society. Ugh, that's very specific. Contributes to widespread discontent over the pace of societal change. I don't know, I think they were talking about that. Decreases the individual's willingness to make sacrifices, benefiting society as a whole. Uh, I don't think they were talking about that either. And then D, endangers certain conventions and institutions that are indispensable to society. I don't really know. Um indispensable to society. That's a strong, strong word. I don't see anything about something being indispensable. Um, if I go back, saying it's against justice. Um, something about depriving him of liberty. Increasing something, his condition in life. I guess he's saying something about humans versus brutes. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm very confused by this. Um, over the pace of societal change. They're not talking about change. Society as a whole. Disempowered groups. None of these answer choices jump out to me here. Um, what would I pick? This is too strong. Decreases the individual's willingness to make sacrifices, but uh, I don't think it's about society as a whole. Discontent. Yeah, I guess it's this, because they're seeking out property. So I'm going to pick A. I have no idea. According to Leo the Thirteenth, what is one essential aspect? Oh, see, I'm out of time. So this is, this is a challenge here of me talking through my strategy as I'm talking to you. But that would have been 13 minutes. I'm going to keep going, and we're going to see how much longer I've got. One, two, three, four questions left. According to Leo the Thirteenth, what is one essential aspect of the concept of private property? Okay, uh, the ease with which land holdings can be exchanged for other forms of property. I don't remember them talking about other forms of property. The belief that people can amass a great deal of property through living frugally. Great deal sounds very strong. The freedom of property holders to determine what to do with their property. The likelihood that those who purchase property will profit from its resale. They're not reselling property. It's C. It's definitely C because he's talking about freedom. He's talking about liberty. He's talking about those concepts. And that, that there, that's connected to the idea of property is you have that freedom to do what you want to do. So uh, that definitely matches things that I've read, even if I didn't totally understand what I read. 18. Leo XIII implies that those who wish to abolish the ownership of private property fail to recognize that such ownership is beneficial in that. Ugh, okay. Well, we've got some lines here. By the chronology rule, I would say the D is probably right, but who knows here. Um, so let's, let's, I should switch colors. Um, those who wish to abolish ownership, or let's use this, 
Abolish ownership. Fail to recognize that ownership is beneficial. Okay, so 20 to 24. Um, okay, that's here. State or municipal bodies hold that thus transferring from private to the present state of will be rights as each will then fare whatever is to something. Okay, so they're transferring it. I don't know. Um, transfer. 25 to 28. Um, but they are blank are so powerless to the controversy where they in effect working man will be the first to suffer okay so working man suffers so it's not that it's beneficial then is beneficial in that I don't know I have no idea 23 32 to 35 is surely that when man engages in a compelling reason, motive of work is to obtain property. So, I don't know. Okay, that may be thereafter is his own. So, it's, it's talking about owning property, right? So, if you abolish it, then I guess you don't you don't work. So, I'll put that. No work. 50 to 56. This is the one I would bet on if I were just using the strategies. 50 to 56. Um, therefore, transfer possessions... Uh, deprive him the liberty, yeah, of disposing of wages, um, increasing something, yeah. So th this is definitely the answer because they're talking about, well, it's beneficial because it helps a person improve themselves. I'm pretty sure that's the answer. Uh, promotes a single, uh, fails to recognize that such ownership, it promotes a single set of values among the wealthy. No, 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 no. It's not about the wealthy. Provides members of the working class a means to improve their circumstances. This is definitely it. Induces workers to feel content with the compensation they receive for their labor. Maybe, but no, it's definitely B. Helps to ensure that the various social classes live in harmony. No, it doesn't talk about that. It's B. It definitely matches. He's t they're talking about increasing um, the, the, the disposing of wages, increasing the condition in life. It, it's very clearly hitting that idea. Perfect. Good. So that, oop, passed it. So that's D and B. And last question, the last paragraph, the discussion of animal creation serves mainly to, okay, animal creation, weird idea, cool, let's look for it, that's here, uh, for a moment, the uh, fact, remedy, pose against justice, every man by nature, right, property, this one of points in between blank and the creation, oops, that's probably it, brute, uh, has direction, mind, reason, which is predominant, human, renders human being, distinguishes from the brute, uh, creation, um, his rights, possessions, permanent possessions. Yeah, so it seems like humans possess things, brutes don't. That's my dumb summary. Centers in humans and animals. Okay, cool. Underscore humans' responsibilities? No. Consider humans' right to keep it? No. I'll draw attention to the basic needs of humans? No. It's A. All right. So I think I went over by like five minutes. Let's see. Let's see how I did here. So um, how do I want to do this? Um, I've got the answers down here somewhere. So yeah, let's see. Um, can I easily copy this? Let's see. B, C, A, B, A, D, C, B, D, A. That's from here to here. Let me just make sure I got it right. B, C, A, B, A, D, C, B, D, A. Okay. Can I move it? Let's see. Ooh. Come on. There we go. Some movement. Some movement. Bear with me, guys. I chose this passage, even though it's early on, because I know it's the these passages you guys have trouble with. So here we go. What did I get right? Let's use this pink here. So B, check. 12C, check. 13A, check. 14B, check. 15A, check. 16D, oh, alas. Uh, C for 17, B for 18, D for 19, A for 20. Woo, one wrong. Okay, let's see if we can figure out 16. Um, right? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yep, okay, 16. Oh, this is one I was confused by. 
Uh, it can be it can reasonably be inferred from the passage that Leo the Thirteenth views socialism being threatening because it the answer is actually D. Yeah, endanger certain conventions. Ooh, so it was the answer that I thought it was definitely wrong. So there you go. That just that just happens sometimes. It's indispensable to society. Um, let's see if I can figure it out from this. Um, yeah, I said it was somewhere in here. Um, oh, here we go. I get it. Rob the possessor, distort the functions of state, under confusion of the community. Yeah, it's there. It's there. Yep. Because they're talking about things that are part of society, right? Endanger certain conventions and institutions. Look, I mean, they're using that word state, uh, the utter confusion of the community. The idea is there. So look, what did we learn from this? Well, we learned that if you kind of know what's going on, you can do pretty well. I would not expect any of you to be able to duplicate what I just did here. This is, you know, 15 years of skill tutoring for the SAT. My takeaway, for, or the takeaway that you should have, is that clearly we can get by without totally understanding the passage. There were plenty of questions here I ended up getting right that I wasn't sure about, but I had a pretty good sense, and, and I saw kind of some similar words, and, uh, you know, it was something. I had an instinct. And so for the sake of time, I would probably just go with that guess and move on. And, you know, I took over 13 minutes to, to go through the passage. I was talking out loud. Obviously, during the real test, I wouldn't do that. And obviously, during the real test, I'd have more of the passage. I think removing a third of it is a lot. I think you're going to understand way more than that. And so you just need to be comfortable with not understanding 100%. You're going to be able to do more if you can shift the focus to the lines. Notice that every time I had a, a question or a choice, I was paying very close attention to the words in those choices. Look at all the underlining I did in the words, right, in the choices. So I'm looking at certain concepts. I'm thinking, did I read that? Was that there? Did I, do I have a memory of that? And I go back if I need to to refresh that memory. But I'm always looking for certain things in the lines. I may not have understood what those lines said, but I would know if they talked about neighborhoods. I would know if they talked about pay. I would know if they were talking about status. Those are ideas that I can then go in and look for. And you know what? If I don't see it, the odds are very good that it's not there. And that's another thing that you need to get used to. You're, you're, you can't be afraid that you're missing something. You have to trust yourself. You might be missing one instance of an idea, but main ideas are repeated ideas. The fact is, it's likely to come up again. And so you might miss it one time, but you're going to see it another. And so you, you're, you got to trust that process. And so, yeah, it's definitely possible that status, neighborhoods, pay, all those ideas were crossed out, that I didn't understand the word that convey that idea. It's possible. But it's improbable. And we have to work with what we know. So if your experience is similar to this, where you're not really reading sentences, you're doing what I did, just kind of seeing certain words and certain words are popping out, you got to say, okay, that's probably going to be good enough. If pay was mentioned, some idea about pay would pop out. If neighborhoods were mentioned, some idea about neighborhoods would probably pop out. And the fact that it doesn't means it's probably not there. You know what it means to talk about pay and money. You know what it means to talk about status or neighborhoods. If you're not seeing it, it's probably not there. You might be wrong occasionally, but, you know, it happens. Our goal is not necessarily to get everything right. If you're coming to Reddit or where my page or whatever and asking for help with the reading section, it's probably not because you have a 750 and you're going for that 800. It's probably because you're at a 550 and you want to get in the sixes. And just to prove my point here, so let me, I have the scale. So I got 9 out of 10. Why can't I switch this? 9 out of 10 right. So that's 90%. So let's say I got lucky and I was able to do pretty much that on the whole thing. Let's do, let's do 85%. 85% of 52 questions is 44 questions. And so I got to find my scores here. That is going to be reading. 44 raw score translates to a 34, which if we just doubled it, just assume your writing is going to be the same, is a 680. So 
I'm on track for a 680 in the reading section without reading the passage. Just learning what I need to focus on in the questions. It's doable. I, you're never going to be at this much of a disadvantage, this much of a handicap. You're always going to be better than what I just did here. So you have to trust that you can do something similar. But you have to shift your focus away from those lines. If you don't understand them, I very much doubt that in a month of prep, you're going to really understand them all that much better. You have to trust that you're going to understand those choices better. You have to learn to what to look for in the choices. Shift your focus from that passage to those lines, to those choices rather, to the questions. That's where the work gets done. You don't need to write some elaborate summary. The answer choices are summaries. You're not coming up with your own summary. They've given you four. You're testing the four summaries that they've given you, and you're seeing, is this really summarizing ideas that I saw? Did I see these ideas from choice C? That's it. Turn it around. Turn the test around from understanding a passage to understanding a question to understanding an answer choice. You'll do better. It takes practice. It's hard. But if you're watching this video after half an hour, you're in it to win it. You're going to do great. Good luck. Ask me questions. This is weird. I'm happy to answer them.